Now let's talk about covalent bonds. Now let's take a simple example. So we have silicon. So silicon, the atomic number is 14 and its electronic configuration is. So its atomic number is 14 and its electronic configuration is 2, then 8 in the intermediate and 4 in the valence shell. So it has 4 valence electron. Now giving away all 4 valence electrons is not a possible task. Now what happens when silicon forms a molecule, what it does is it share electrons. So it share its outermost electron with 4 other silicon atoms. So in case of covalent bond, it is not the donation of electrons, but it is the sharing of electrons. Now this silicon atom have 4 electrons in its valence. Let's mark those 4 electrons. These are the outermost electrons. Now it need, let's say if it has 4 more electrons, we can say that it will form a stable noble gas configuration that is 2, 8, 8. So it needs 4 more electrons to form the stable configuration. So how is it possible? Let's see that. Now it shares with an adjacent silicon atom and electron. Now consider this silicon atom, the silicon atom at the center. Now it has four electrons in the valence shell and now it shares an electron with the neighboring silicon atom. Similarly, it shares with this silicon atom. So now it has four, it already have now five plus one, six, it has now six valence electrons. Now it has seven and when it completes this sharing, the silicon atom at the center now has eight valence electrons. Once they have formed the covalent bond, we cannot say that this particular electron belongs to this silicon or this silicon. They belongs to the bond. And this pattern repeats throughout the crystal. That means this silicon also looks for other three silicon atoms and shares its electrons. And it extends along all dimensions. Now this is how it's going to propagate. That means this silicon atom at the center. In this figure, we have the silicon atom at the center and the four valence electrons depicted here. Now these four electrons are shared with four neighboring silicon atoms. Similarly, this silicon atom shares its electrons with four other neighboring silicon atoms. And this is how the crystal is held in place. Now if you look at the conductivity of silicon atom at say 0 Kelvin, where all the electrons are held in the bonds itself. Okay, we are talking about silicon crystal at 0 Kelvin where all electrons are held by the atoms or are in the bonds, the silicon acts as an insulator. So this is a popular question. So silicon at 0 Kelvin acts as an insulator. The reason is that at 0 Kelvin and they do not have energy to break the bonds and come out and contribute to flow of charges. We have said that when charges flow, there is a current flow. So that's why silicon at 0 Kelvin acts as an insulator. The simple explanation is all electrons are in the bond. Okay? The electrons do not have sufficient energy to break the bond. So silicon at 0 Kelvin acts as an insulator. But as temperature increases, it's so I'm going slightly out of topic here, but still it's good to know that as temperature increases, these electrons may gain sufficient energy and since these bonds are not as strong as ionic bonds, they can break and come out. Once these electrons come out of these bonds, they can act as charge carriers. And we know that once there are charge carriers, they contribute to conduction. We have discussed the, about this method, this method of uh, increasing the temperature to generate more charge carriers. So this is what happens when we increase the temperature. Electrons will gain energy, they will break the bonds and become free to move throughout the crystal structure and they contribute to current flow. Now let's summarize covalent bond. So in covalent bond, the valence electrons are shared with its neighbors. 
so electrons do not belong to an atom but it belongs to the bond the crystal structure is held together by quantum mechanical interaction between neighboring atoms